we never kicked off this episode. <laughs> Welcome to 44 and 1. I'm G Vizzle. This is Tempest. Today we're Hello. just talking about some stuff. Yeah, just having okay, a meander. Good. Yeah, just jibber jabbering. Mealworms. This one's actually a good news story. Mealworms, I lost the headline, can eat toxic polystyrene foam safely. Wow. Mm. Did you hear that there's um, a bacteria that has sex on your face? and um, it's in danger of uh, going extinct. How? I mean, everybody sleeps. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna look it up. Like, so. it's not like the playground is out of, out of business. Like, how does that happen? Mm-hmm. Oh, an Illinois family finds preserved McDonald's food from over 50 years ago in the walls of their home. Oh, I heard about um this guy kept one. He had he had they found like a cheeseburger or a double cheeseburger in his coat pocket he hadn't worn for like 15 years. And it was still it wasn't moldy or anything. I did see someone like they did an experiment where they put like a glass dome over it and just like yeah. waited. And then it looked exactly the same. Five fetuses found in the home of a DC anti-abortion activist. Nice. These are all kind of dirt. <laughs> yeah. A robber in Warren asked his victims to pinky promise that they wouldn't report him. Yeah, pinky promise. <laughs> yeah, 22-year-old was walking down. He was approached by a man wearing a ski mask. Said the man asked if he was a drug dealer. When he responded that he wasn't, he said the robber pulled out a pocket knife and demanded money from him. According to the report, the victim estimated that he took about $80 from him before making him pinky promise that he wouldn't call the cops. <coughs> and then the robber rode off on a bicycle. <laughs> I wonder if he had a horn or a bell. <laughs> Police said the victim was not able to give them a good description of, of the robber as it was dark at the time of the robbery. Did you know, sir, if you are a witness of a crime mm. or you're a potential witness to a potential crime, alleged whatever word you want to use, pay attention to the criminal shoes because most people will take a change of clothes. Like they'll take off their hoodie or put on another jacket in the attempt that it will change their appearance, but they never bring an extra pair of shoes. So if you can accurately describe the shoes, according to a police officer from a location I no longer remember, then they have a better likelihood of catching the criminal. A better likelihood, but I don't think it's going to be significant because um, to actually accurately say what the shoes are, and then it's about how many other people could have those shoes in that area. But ideally, I mean, usually it's not like you're an eyewitness after the fact. It's like, he went that way. He was wearing those shoes. And then the police would hopefully still be able to find the evidence on them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's more useful then. Yeah. And then he's got to poo-poo everything. Exactly. That's, that's my job. <laughs> Two police officers were fired for ignoring a robbery. They could catch Snorlax, a Pokemon. I've heard that one, I think. Yeah. It just so happened. Bad. It happened a couple months ago. I think it's like, uh, I guess that was the states, was it? Of course. Because yeah. like their the, their training for their police is so bad. Like I saw a really funny clip the other day, and these two police officers couldn't chase the guy because they were too unfit and overweight to actually chase the criminal. And the criminal caught himself because as he was running, he looked behind him and then ran smack into a lamppost and knocked himself out. And then the police were able to catch up to him. We got him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the police officers um, outside, the Texas police officers who were outside the school on that fateful day didn't look like they'd really be able to chase someone down. Yeah. And like, and those guys, um, the, the worst bit about the Uvalde thing was that uh, they had everything they needed to apprehend the criminal. Except moles. Yeah, that was literally all they were lacking. <laughs> I think there was, I read the story of like one police officer, his wife, police officer, his wife was a teacher in the school and he tried to get into the school to save his wife and they took away his gun and like restrained him outside. So it's not only that like a husband is trying to save his wife, he's a police officer and they were still like, no, no, man. It's dangerous in there. Let the yeah. kids get it first. Fuck <laughs> me. What are you paying them for? My God. I don't know. Hey, I, I, I watch, I've watched quite a few sort of videos on YouTube and that of like deconstructions of uh, some of like the police shootings and things. And the stuff that the, the police have to deal with is really shit. But like, 
they're not trained either to deal with these situations. And then most of the time they go into these situations and just raise the energy in the room to the same as the criminal. At this point, though, shouldn't they? Because, I mean, children in schools are having active shooter drills. Why aren't the police mm. officers receiving that same level of training? Yeah, 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 right? exactly. And then this like, is the thing. Why like, are these, like, third graders and fourth graders more prepared? Like, yeah. okay, I hear gunshots, get under the table, do this, do this. And the police were like, no, what do we do? Exactly. It's, it's a fucking joke. Like, there, there's no reason for them not to get the training. So they spend all of the money on uh, new firearms for the police. I remember police in America used to carry like a handgun. Now they've mm. got shotguns, AR-15s, they've got body armor. They have uh, better vehicles, but no training, no de-escalation training, no cultural awareness training. Like, for example, um, when a person in authority speaks to uh, a white person, we hold eye contact with them. And then we actually have a dialogue with them. But uh, black men uh, particularly don't maintain eye contact. They look away. And then the white police officer thinks that they're being shifty. But they're not. It's just how they show deference to a person in authority. And it's just how they communicate. It's just a cultural thing. And then they think they take that then that this black person's up to no good when they're not. And it makes, I mean, it, it goes for a lot of different cultures. Have a lot, like, I mean, like, this is like, okay, in a lot of places, like, right, like, okay. And then yeah. I think some groups have turned that now into a, a hate symbol. No, that's a hoax. Is it a hoax? Okay. Yeah. Then I made like a video where I was like, one, two, three. And then I was like, oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, that was okay. a hoax. So, but in, I think there's some countries where this is kind of the equivalent of that. So like, mm. if you give someone the okay, they're going to take offense to it. Like, again, yeah, yeah. know the groups that you're supporting. It's interesting. I saw... Uh, TikTok yesterday or the day before and it was um, a black nurse was saying this is why we need representation in healthcare she said that one of her um, patients I can't remember what ward it is I think uh, but like I think it was like maternity ward or something mm -hmm. she was uh, one of the white nurses had sent her for a psyche valve so she's like well why does she need a psyche valve and the white nurse said every time I go into her room she's hitting herself and she's like show me what she's doing and the <laughs> she's, like, she's like is she doing this and the nurse said yes. And she goes, no, she just needs a psyche valve. She's got a weave. And that's like when you can't get to your scalp, that's how. That's how you scratch. Yeah. yeah but yeah. this white nurse didn't know. So she thought this woman was like hitting herself and sent her for a psyche valve. Where had she, yeah, had, yeah. had there been more representation or more cultural awareness, then you would know. Well, why did the nurse fucking ask her as well? Like. Why do you just make this is what pisses me off in mental health care? They make so many assumptions. Exactly. Why not be like, hey, like what's yeah. what's going on? Are, are you okay? Just itchy. Yeah. Done. Well, it's like that thing I told you with that uh I think it's when we recorded with the debt. And then there was that um woman with severe mental health problems, and then she was in a psychiatric hospital and she was wiping shit all over her walls, her own shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then it turns out that as soon as they bought her some uh watercolors, she stopped no, wiping shit everywhere. Paid. Yeah. Just wanted to paint. you got to figure out how to communicate with people and th i think that that is one of the the biggest causes of problems in the united states is nobody can fucking talk to each other not just there i think it's i think it's more than just the no united i mean states i think problem. it's 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 a particular problem in america is what i mean that because you've got guns involved you've got the kind of culture they've got and you've got the police that go in and then instead of bringing the energy of people down they go in and match their energy and but that is so everywhere right yeah. like think of every romantic comedy you've ever seen mm. yeah. <laughs> or even sitcom it's things are calm something gets misunderstood nobody yeah. asks the question yeah. hilarity or drama ensues and then finally we come to an understanding right like yeah. that's except in real premise. life in real life they don't come to an understanding and then people get shot or something or in real life you ask the questions right yeah. like how many plot line is like woman's walking down the street, sees boyfriend in a restaurant with another woman, turns yeah. to her friend, her friend's like he's totes fucking her, and the other one's like, I know, right? Like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then instead of asking, Hey, I saw you today in a restaurant, it's like mm. we need to learn his telephone password, we need to sneak in the bushes outside yeah. of his house. Just ask, just hey, or just walk over. Yeah, hello. Hey. Yeah, what's going on? Because then if you walk over and say hey, then you'll immediately know what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. And if, and it, okay, oh, this is, this is my work colleague. This is my girlfriend, mm. whatever. Or if it's just like, oh, fuck. 
then yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, because yeah, I think in that shitty Shyamalan film, The Happening, there was a whole subplot between Mark Wahlberg and uh, Zoe Deschanel, who, um, like, she'd gone out for tiramisu with a work colleague who was a man, and then they were having relationship troubles because of that, because she went out for tiramisu. <laughs> was tiramisu like a code word for like tiramisu? I think it was very literal. <laughs> It's like, Jesus, do you, like, have some self-respect. <laughs> I think that's why, like, sometimes when I'm, like, making comments online about something, like, I have to put this preface on it, being like, I am genuinely asking this question. Yeah. This is not facetious. I am not a troll. Mm. Like, I really want to know. Because everything is taken so mm. literally. Mm. And there needs, I guess, there needs to be a sarcasm font. There really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really does. Well, there was... Um, there was someone on, um, you know, I told you about that guy, Jupiter Ball, and then I could watch a lot of his context and learn a lot about, uh, I guess, like black issues and gay issues and things like that in, in Britain. And because I trust his content, so I ask him a question sometimes, and then I know I can trust his answer and his perspective. Anyway, so I answered a question, asked a question once, and then it, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, it's something to do with in America. And then somebody replied to what I said, and then said something really just derogatory, like, oh, when are white people going to um, stop assuming that just because we're black, we can answer all the world's questions about black people? And then Jupiter Bar said, no, he's, it's a genuine question. He's just interested. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, I was like, I said, because, you know, there's loads of bullshit on the internet and I can trust this guy's content. So I know if I ask him the question, if he can't answer it, he's going to point me to someone who can. And then the also, person... Like... <clears throat> Why, I mean, if someone genuinely wants to learn, why is that being poopy, yeah. right? Like, if you, that's how we break down the differences between us is to understand where there are similarities and to break those things down. Like, a lot of hatred is bred through ignorance and fear. So let's yeah. eliminate those barriers and then let's come to an understanding of one another. Like, yeah. I just don't get it. <clears throat> it's like people who make fun of other people for not knowing something. Yeah, I know, right? right? And it's like, yeah. were you born knowing how to spell melancholy right like yeah. you know did you know it wasn't melancholy or your entire yeah. life but and instead of like poking fun just be like you know what what an exciting day for you you get to learn a new thing like yeah. turning it and spinning it just so mm. small in that way it just changes the whole vibe of it it does it does um i remember the, the, cause it has practical applications in life because when i was working at nhs england um i had a mentee um and then because like when they do like a year in industry a lot of the students so in their third year of uni um they do a like a placement year at nhs england or something and then they go back to uni afterwards but anyway um she was nigerian british um and so she was worried that some of her i guess interactions with her boss and all that stuff she, she was a bit worried they were guided by a race um, and then because she was able to have that conversation with me um it meant that i could kind of show her like well no i went through exactly the same thing um this is what happened this is why that happened you know and and so she could understand then that in this specific context race wasn't the issue which is like i think that if you're if you spent your whole life being i guess perceived a certain way and having certain things thrown at you because of your race you're gonna start seeing it everywhere aren't you uh it's yeah, just only sure. natural um so i think it was so that because she was able to talk about it um then she was able to kind of understand what was going on in the workplace and that's amazing that she would ask the question and be able to yeah. have that conversation because a lot of people yeah. just assume especially with such a young woman as well like she's a student at university not many uh, uh kids at university i guess kids i mean they're adults but a lot of them don't have the maturity to have those kinds of discussions in the workplace i mean there's a reason why i was on the management scheme they were training people how to have difficult conversations with their employees or their mentees and showing you how to like doing all these weird role play things because a lot of the people in their mid to early 20s just don't know how to have those conversations but, and uh, most don't going into their 30s and 40s right they never yeah. learn those skills early so they never develop those skills so mm. you have hence the misunderstanding and the lack of communication and yeah. all the assumptions being made and like you're right about looking at it from a different lens it's like <clears throat> like as a woman i may be extra sensitive to someone explaining something to me because i'm like oh you're just mansplaining because it happens all the time when it could just be like a genuine <laughs> yeah 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 right like it's all the 
the colored lenses that we look at things through. I, I did. I did get accused of mansplaining once um, uh, by by another student on the on the grad scheme because like I can't what we're talking about, but sh she says one thing, and I was like, oh yeah, cool, and then I added more onto it, and then she went, Are "You mansplaining to me right now," and then one of my mates went like, "No, I don't think he was." I was like, "No," I was like, "You had made an interesting point." I added extra information onto it to what you were saying, and I was showing that I was engaged with the discussion that we were having. This is a conversation. This is a yeah, conversation. yeah. I was like, that's how conversations work. <laughs> I saw someone on TikTok make a video about that the other day. It was a young woman who was like, I'm not trying to one-up you or show off. I'm just yeah. excited about what you're talking about, and I want to continue that conversation. But exactly. everyone's just so guarded and jaded. Yeah, yeah. So this sad. Oh, this is why I don't get annoyed when you interrupt me every five seconds. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, because people I just won't do... speak anymore then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fucking bitch. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not apologizing. <laughs> we'll fucking see about that. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't send me bombs in the post. Um but no, it's because the reason why people do that, it's because they're excited about what you're saying. They're excited about the conversation. And then sometimes it bubbles up inside you and you have to say it before you forget it. See? Yeah. You interrupt me too. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> so I'm on countdown. I'm on camping countdown. Hmm. I'm head to Quebec. Oh, awesome. You're excited just to get away and get, get into the middle of nowhere. Yes and no. I'm excited to get away. Uh, it's a pain in the arse. <laughs> the arse. Especially this year, like yesterday. Like, so my, I don't know what, what I did. I think the painting from a couple of days ago, kind of like I should, I should have exercised better form because mm -hmm. yesterday, like all day, my back was just on the verge of snapping. Mm. Like I was at the grocery store and I like reached for something and I was like, if you move another millimeter. Oh, you t all the twinges. And you're fucked. Yeah. Mm. So then like I had to... <laughs> I was like a character in like a 1990s video game. Every time I had to get something off the shelf, I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. It was like CJ Johnson from GTA. So, <laughs> so, so that is, and then my husband still has like both of his knees messed up. So if we're oh, camping yeah. and his knees are shot, then that limits not only what we can do together, but mm. now been like, I'm 24 seven responsible for taking care of the dogs because he can't <laughs> go anywhere and do anything. So <laughs> how do you know he's not um, shamming it? And like, oh, cause I kicked him right in the kneecap and it was legit. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. As long as you know, yeah, well, you have to test it. It's only I scientific. Bit, yeah. No, I get you. He's, <clears throat> you know, cause when he knows he's not, when he thinks he's not being watched and he's mm. still in pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Those cameras I sent you are paying off then. <laughs> I told you they were a good idea. You need to get a good surveillance package on your partner. We do have, we have two cameras on either side of our, like, in the backyard and the front yard. Mm. So one day, I'm leaving our house, and there's a big pile of steamy dog shit oh, in nice. front of our house. Mm. So first, I left a, <laughs> I put up signs. I put up a sign over it saying, like, you forgot something. <laughs> the other side of the sign was like, found. If you lost this, come collect it. Nobody did. And then I was like, oh, the camera. So I went to check the camera. So the view from our camera started here. Yeah. The poop was over here. So, oh, like, I, no. it was just. But and I was like, I thought I thought I like Sherlock Holmes this shit. And then I was like, you you might still have done that because you you just gotta look at see if anybody sort of walks past it like a bit slower or a bit out of sync to what you'd expect. You know. But there's a lot of dog like a lot of dogs walk past my house. I don't know what time the poo was left. <laughs> so I couldn't narrow down the window. And there's a lot of big dogs. So I could have like strapped it by like if a shih tzu walked by, I wouldn't have imagined. <laughs> he would have been like pound for pound they probably weighed the same so i was like looking for the big dogs but there were enough big dogs that mm. walked by but was there any of them like the cadence and their walk was a bit different that like you know if it, if it was only just out of shot they might have still been ambling and not got back up to walking speed no they were everyone was pretty there was nothing that stood out i wish i still had the footage to go back and take a 
closer look at it, but one of my cats is like, um, I don't know what's up with her poo, but like she's dropping off like really hard poos, and then I think they get stuck to her bum, so she doesn't notice and walks around. And occasionally, I'll find a little tadpole looking poo just sitting is on the it, floor. Is she dehydrated, maybe? No, I don't know. I, I think is it. <sighs> She did have worms, so I'm wondering if it's something to do with that. So. Um, there was one day, Zul likes to eat grass sometimes, so one day mm. we were walking, and she had, like, just finished a poop. And then she was walking ahead of me, and I was like, what was that? She had, like, about an inch of <laughs> a blade of grass hanging out of her mouth. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so I, like, put on a glove, and I'm like, Pull it off. Oh, yes. talking about gloves, this ghost to work with had a really minging story. So you know how sometimes they haze new work members in, in jobs, right? Okay, so he was a psychiatric nurse. And the hazing that he got in his new job was that when you give a patient a suppository, you have to put a glove on, you put the suppository on your finger, and then you go, stick up their bum. Anyway, this dickhead cut the end of the glove off. Yeah. And he stuck his finger up the, this person's bum. <laughs> yeah. Wait, he cut the end of his own glove off? No, 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 this guy did it to him to haze him. So, like... The, the, but then they, wouldn't he have noticed that there was no... Yeah, he was a bit preoccupied with getting ready for the suppository. And then, like, the way that the gloves are, like, it's something to do with the way they're packaged. And then they're kind of, like, attached to a piece of card. And then, like, you put your hand in and sort of pull it off or something. I don't know. So, oh. yeah, it's just to do all that. And then because they're quite thin gloves, like, you can't really feel it. Yeah. So, did the person who hazed him, what repercussions were there for him? Because that's... What? Yeah, yeah. I have all the respect in the world for nurses, because that is not a job I would be able to do. Like, I, it's, even more so than doctors, I respect nurses, because there's a... Like, doctors come in and be like, okay, diagnose. Okay, nurse. Change their diapers. And, like, yeah. <laughs> all that stuff. I couldn't do it. All the respect in the world, I couldn't. Like, I've already even told my mom. I'm like, mom, I love you a bit. I love you a bit, but... I'm never going to change your diaper. Nah, it's, never. <laughs> it, it's a big ask. And like the stuff that they have to go through, it, like a lot of nurses that they end up with, um, like their bladders get really saggy when they're older and they can't get rid of all their pee. So they get lots of urinary uh, infections when they're older. Yeah, because they're so short staffed and they have to work that they can't go off, nip off for a pee. So their bladders get really full. And then because they, do it all the time their bladders get overextended which means that after like 30 years of doing that job their bladders get all saggy like they're you making this up is this a penis, fit, penis fit, fit no 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 honestly it's a real i used to work in urology it's a real thing well i did i did also <laughs> learn that uh 80 of healthcare workers develop a latex allergy from all the yeah. gloves see and i don't know how prevalent this is for the nurses and it might depend on what their particular job is but um, the, this nurse I was talking to was a general nurse and she had to do a lot of night shifts and things. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a big risk. The tiny mites that have sex on your face are close to extinction and that'll be bad news for your skin, writes Amy Barrett. Oh yeah, I forgot that you brought that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so why is it bad for our skin? I don't know. Apparently they're 0.3 millimeter. I'm about to get there. 0.3 millimeter small mites. And they're just about visible by the human eye and they're crawling over your body as you sleep. That is gross. Uh, they live inside the pores of your skin and use the oils that you produce to fuel their all night mating sessions. And supposedly okay. that's a good thing. I have no prob problems with there being like bacteria, obviously, because I know there's like tiny, tiny bacteria in your eyelashes and I know mm. it all exists. My I. I have a problem with there being mites, an all night orgy on my face. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're not even bacteria either. Like, they're they're bigger. They're you know. Well, point three is still. I mean, this is almost visible to the human eye. That's still pretty small. But like, <laughs> I don't know, like hero gasm. On my <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they were once blamed for conditions like acne, rosacea, and itchy scalps. And these late night lovers might actually be keeping our pores unblocked and free of the oils that contribute to bad skin problems. Late night lovers. Okay, so uh, I'm curious, is the oil in my pore 
like lube is it <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like might lube is it i think like it's cushion for where the <laughs> cushion for the cushion <laughs> Yeah, we're cushion for the push. Like, don't come and knock it if this core is a rocket. Like, oh. <laughs> I think they use it as food, uh, I think. And they kind of like roll around in it, perhaps. To, like sustain their energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to keep it going. I'm picturing like Gozer in the backyard rolling around in the grass. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Only when I sleep, what happens when I'm awake? Uh, Are they no sleeping idea. when I'm awake? I have no idea. And then when I fall asleep, they're like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and every night god bless <laughs> all night is every night and then when they if they're mating mm. and then they have the mite babies are they like how are they becoming extinct i don't know um uh... because you'd you'd think like they can't really travel very far. It's not like they're going to leave my face and go to somebody else's face. So I should have yeah, like if I started if I started with let's say a hundred mites, and then they each have ten babies. Now I've got a thousand mites, and then they have ten babies. I ten like eventually my face is going to be more mite than face. Yeah, yeah. You would have thought so, wouldn't you? So they must have like a really short lifespan to like so that you're you're just not permanently covered in these horrible mites. And then how, like, when they die, I guess they, do I just exfoliate them off or wash yeah, them off? Yeah, it must do, yeah. They must just kind of, like, when you wash your face and stuff. They, um, they live in the follicles on our faces and nipples. And the mites' preference, scientists say, though they can be found all over the body, has left them with such an isolated experience that they're fast approaching in an evolutionary dead end. With very few mite mingling events, mating pairs have passed on the same genes for millions of years and shed the ones that were unnecessary. So incest is what's happening. They become yeah. so in, they become so inbred. Yeah, yeah. That they can know the DNA just go. Bloop. <laughs> they're, they're like the so, royal family. <laughs> so how would you find like they said mite mating or might meetups like a might yeah might mingling might may like they into like a might grinder because, or twitter because or because how you or what's the day is it? tinder like if you were to sit side by side with somebody's face would that be enough for like oh we're gonna i think the issue is is that because they only stay on your nipples and your face mainly it means that there's no other uh, because they're in they're not basically the same kind of environment and so there's nothing to um I guess, stress the genetic code of the mites to make them, there's no different selection pressures. So they're not changing If I have mites on my face, right? If mm. I have, like, let's say I have mites on my face, you have mites in your face, we hug, we touch cheeks. Mm. Would that be an opportunity for, like, some mites to, like... I think they transfer? could, but because they exist in the same environment, they're both just going to have, like, the same DNA, effectively. And because it's been going on for so many millions of years and they're on everybody's faces, like if they were in your butt and then your butt mites mingled with somebody's, I don't know, finger mites, then, you know, because uh, the bum is a very different environment to your fingers and they're exposed to different things, it would encourage um, mutation in the genetic code. But because... But, I like how you tied this back to the hazing suppository story about <laughs> finger mites yeah closing that loop but wouldn't the like nipple with the nipple mites be the same as the face mites i think so because of the way that um just I, i'm just assuming here that like because it they, they found it to be a particular issue for the mites that um because they exist in the follicles in those areas that they must be quite similar around your nipples to your face so okay then what are the risks they become extinct and then what happens they're, if they're eating the oils on our face, we just have exceedingly oily faces from now on? Basically, yeah. Like, we'll get more acne. We'll have, like, more skin infections and stuff like that. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not for someone who has dry skin, because they may they may welcome. Or maybe they have dry skin because they have so many mites. Maybe. Hmm? A thriving mite colony. <laughs> they don't like breeding outside the family unit. <laughs> Which is why they're extinct. That's what happens. Yeah, yeah. With enough inbreeding, that's what happens. 
Um, so it says, might have been blamed for a lot of things, said Dr. Henk Brague, co-lead author of this study. But their long association with humours might suggest they could also have simple but important beneficial roles. For example, in keeping the pores in our face unplugged. So we'll just have to wash our face more. This is a golden opportunity for uh, <laughs> Neutrogena and other yeah, face yeah. <laughs> oh, how long until... Are health... you running out of mics? <laughs> oh, yo, exactly. <laughs> But how how long is it though until they start selling mites by the packet in the shop, like uh, sea monkeys or something? Well, they have those um, those pedicures that are tiny fish. Oh yeah, yeah. That skin, so that'll be it. They'll be like mite spas. And then you just dip your face in like a box of mites. Yeah. What? It's a mite spa. Yeah. To rejuvenate, fish will eat the dead skin off of your face. Mites mm. will be attached to your or to your feet, mites will be implanted onto your face and your nipples. And nipples. Yeah. And nipples. Don't forget the nipples and the nipples. <laughs> While you're being waxed at the same time, it's a full service spa. <laughs> it's a money maker, I think. Yeah, yeah. For a million dollar idea, we need to cut that out of the podcast so no one else steals it. <laughs> what would you call it? Might match. <laughs> <laughs> Might oh you could do like a package like a mites mites and manicures <laughs> mighty fish my mm. nailed it yeah. yes that's a good one <laughs> um what else nipples and nails <laughs> <laughs> hands face space oh <laughs> although I th I'm thinking with this episode is going to be called nipples and nails like that's <laughs> Yes. It's official. It's official. <laughs> oh, can you imagine the thumbnail? <laughs> I want a tiny mite climbing an areola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> planting a little flag on the top on the top I, of the nipple. I do it'll be our first viral episode. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves nails and nipples. <laughs> So we're packing up our camper today because we're renting it out. Is it any Putting good? everything back. Pardon? Did, did they bring it back in one piece? They did. Actually, they were a very lovely family. They accidentally ripped uh, the shower curtain, so they bought us a new shower curtain. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it was very thoughtful. So everything's intact, but like because we when we rent it, we have to empty it out. All mm. the stuff, because we usually just keep stuff in there throughout the year. Like I've, we've got clothes in there and towels and whatnot that are just like camper stuff. We have to pull it all back out and put it back in. So now we're being very critical about what we're putting in there. <laughs> and um, my, <laughs> I had, there were, I think at count, like eight bottles of bug spray and like three tubes of like after bite. <laughs> <laughs> do you get eaten alive? In some places we do, but I think sometimes I'm just like, do we have bug spray? I'll just buy it to be sure. There's like six <laughs> bottles of like sunscreen. So yeah, it's a good opportunity to streamline to clean everything out. There, there seems to be lots of theories why some people get eaten and some don't. Like I, I don't ever get bitten really. Um, blood type apparently is one. Mosquitoes are attracted to certain blood types. There's a whole, there's a, a scent that people mm. give off that tells mosquitoes what their blood types are so they know but did but there was like that's only certain blood types i don't think when you did yeah. your tiktok on it i don't think a negative was one of them i don't think so i think it was O. I think it was O. Mm. O negative or O positive attracts more mosquitoes than any other mm. blood type i think i've heard also scents like if you wear mm. like i know when we go camping we keep all of our soap and like deodorant and antiperspirant scent free because anything scented will attract mosquitoes potentially Lights track them, so we've got like LED lights for outside, and I think there was something else like certain colors of clothing may be more attractive to mosquitoes. Interesting, but it's oh, not. I mean, it Quebec is really bad when we go to the family reunion, like it's really <laughs> bad there. But then we get to our campsite, it's not, it's more like horse flies and deer flies and <laughs> other big ass flies. We can't. So, one of the first times my husband and I went camping, we actually drove to Myrtle Beach. We were we're going to drive and like stop and camp along the way and then stay there for a few days because it's got good good golfing for him so we pulled to this campsite and it was i guess a little bit off season 
So we go to this campsite and the park ranger, as he's setting us up, there's nobody else in this park. Like we're the only ones there. We're in the US, like we've never been in the US. Like that morning we went to a mall to buy stuff and like there was a sign on the door saying, keep your guns in the cars. We were like, oh, we're, yeah. we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we get there and then the park ranger is like, oh, just keep an eye out for like bobcats and bears. Mm. And I was like, what now? Yeah. <laughs> but everything, like it's true, everything is bigger in the US. Like the bugs mm. were, I could hear them. Like it, they were like tiny motorcycles. It was like, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Past my head. I, <laughs> like a mosquito hoodie mm. that had like a zipper on the neck. So like it covered me completely. And then when I wanted to drink, I was like, zip. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> the next like that night that we were there i never saw a bobcat or a bear that night we hear like this rumble of motorcycles and like 10 or 12 bikers like bikers yeah yeah pull into the the campsite it's them and it's us i'm like we're gonna get murdered <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But then 15 minutes later, I started to hear like bikes. Ding, ling, ling. They were riding around in 10 speeds. Ding, ling, ling. And I was like, I'll be fine. The wrong guy. But yeah, the bugs were ridiculous. And even we were, we went on a hike mm. and the hike started with this like beautiful big wide path and like you could see the sun. And then it was like in the Wizard of Oz when they got to like the witch's forest, the path started to get more narrow. There was more tree cover. So there wasn't as much sun. There were like spider webs this big from like tree to tree. Uh. So we're walking through and then like I said something to my husband and he turned his face to answer me. And then when he turned back, he was like about to walk right into a yeah. web. The spider in this web, the body must have been like that big. <laughs> and it was like red with like dots on it. So like it was mm. the art, it was like this. This is this my face on this. This is my face. <laughs> And then he saw that and he looked at me. He's like, Do you want to turn around? He's like, Yeah, you better. Yeah. Like, be a good idea. Get the flag out of there. Oh, man. Fuck it out. It's horrifying. <laughs> remember that spider. We made eye contact. That's how big it was. We made eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> With all eight of his eyes. <laughs> he did that. Yeah. How cute is that food race? Yeah, I've seen it before. He's fucking adorable. But the dog, I've seen food races, but I have mm. not seen a dog request a food race before. No, I have, that's the first, because like he, he comes up in my feed sometimes, like once every month or so. And I've seen other food races, but I've never seen him demand it. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. so glad I never taught my dogs those. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would be lovely to be able to communicate with them occasionally, but yeah, you don't I want cannot it. stand Zool in here all day to, like, treat no Great. exactly Great. It, i i think it's a it, it's a pandora's box you don't want to open definitely if i want i mean i do want the ability to communicate with my dogs but i only want it i only want them to be able to answer direct questions mm. i would like for them to as soon as i say like mm -hmm. zula i have a question for you she has full capacity to understand and to speak and so I can ask her a direct question. She can answer that question. And once her answer is complete, she goes back to like. Yeah, nothing going on. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be like, like the, uh, I was thinking like the Hogwarts sorting hat, right? Like the dog, that's probably not like hanging out all day, every day talking, right? It just has that job, that one job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I put it away. Zool's one job. I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to answer it. Go back to being a dog. It's interesting that you picked Zool to, for that anecdote rather than, than uh, Goza. Oh, why is that? No, I'm just saying it's interesting that you only picked one. I oh. don't know why it is. But it's just funny that, you know, you, you focused on Zool. <laughs> is Goza that much of a, a clown? Goza is less of a mystery than Zool. <laughs> Zool is... <clears throat> I'd like to know what Zul's thinking. I'd like to know what Gozer's thinking, but not in a like, what are you thinking kind of way. More of a like, what the fuck is going on in that crazy video? Kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, I would like both of them. Maybe it's because Zul only has one syllable and Gozer has two, and I was trying to be lazy with my words. Gozer is turning the big four. Big four. Where are you going to get him? 
Uh, I'm going to crack an egg over his food. He's going to love that. He's allergic to chicken, so yeah. we used to give them, like, chicken until he developed the allergy on their birthdays, but oh. we'll get a nice, freshly cracked egg. Zul will, too, because she'll she'll look at me with that face, and then I'll give her one, so <laughs> it's everyone's birthday on Tuesday. My, my cousin, uh, he he's a little bitch. Um, I don't know the way of putting it, but anyway, when we were all kids, okay, he's a few years younger than me, but he was so entitled and such a moany little brat that like if it was someone's birthday and they're opening presents he would have a hissy fit and go upstairs and just lock the bathroom door the video i don't know who sent it to who but that little girl at a party where she blew out the girl's (laughs) candle and like it was a like a bar brawl (laughs) and she knew what she was doing Oh, she t- she had a shit eating grin on her face the whole time. <laughs> yeah, the, but my, now like Zul and Gozer are so accustomed to certain sounds. Like if I make eggs for myself, as soon as they hear it crack, wherever they are in the house, they come when they hear the egg. So then I have to like with the two shells of the egg, be like, okay, and they can like lick the inside of the shell. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> it's the same thing with cheese when they hear like a bag of shredded cheese, mm. they come <laughs> running. I don't know if dogs are the same, but cats can tell, like, they learn, like, the the different, I guess, the variance in the sound. So, like, say if you get a tin of tomato soup and plonk it on the kitchen, they know that that's not for them. But you get a tin of tuna and just chuck it on the counter, they know that it's tuna by the sound of the cat. <laughs> I imagine dogs would be the same, because, like, yeah. other things that make sounds don't draw them, but, mm. like, that very specific bag of cheese sent. I don't know if I told you this. When you had me watching that, like, oh, my stupid chair is creepy. When you had me watching that, oh, what was it called? All of Us Are Dead? Mm. Okay. So there was one scene. So I was watching it up here in my office. And my husband was downstairs watching TV, and the dogs were with him. Mm. And so they they fucked off all night. They didn't come anywhere near me all night. They were hanging out on the sofa. They were super chill and comfortable. Excellent. Then there's, like, a zombie attack scene in the show, and both of them, I hear them hauling ass up the stairs and they sat right beside me and looked at me and I was like, what the fuck? The sound the zombies were making sounded like a bag of cheese being open. <laughs> so they thought I was up here like hoarding cheese and eating it in secret. <laughs> so it, they didn't want, they weren't coming to protect you from zombies. No, they just No, they cheese. were like, that bitch has cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Like, I couldn't figure it out. And I like paused the show and I was like, what's going on? And then like, I had to rewind it a few seconds. And then I heard the sound. I was like, I don't have, and I'm like, like a magician. I don't have cheese, dummies. I I was, um, I I was on the toilet. I was doing a dump as you do. Right. And um, you're going to do it. That's the best place to do it. It is. It is. I have tried it in other places, but uh, I get showered at. So, you know, it's illegal in most cases. Okay. I don't care about breaking the rules. I'm a maverick. (laughs) <laughs> women do love a bad boy <laughs> yeah and that's how i do it that's how i show off my bad boyness i take shits on their garden uh anyway a shitter. <laughs> yeah i'm a frotter and a public shitter a frotteur yeah <laughs> no i'm working class i'm a frotter oh, okay. yeah. uh, what's my story oh yeah so i was flicking through tiktok while taking a dump and uh there was an episode there was a video and it said like play if you play this sound your cat is supposed to come running and i just want to see what the sound was and this is like this sound that cats make when they're crooning and they they usually do it when they've got something in their mouth like a mouse and then they walk around and go it's like a really weird sound sound like little wookies anyway and then so started playing and then hester just ran up into the bathroom she's like what works what is it (laughs) yeah just hester none of the other cats yeah no no just hester yeah I should try I, that for dogs. Yeah, my, my theory is that the particular noise that they make, because Padme does it when she's got her whatever toy mice, so she walks around the house making the sound. I think it's associated with, hey, everybody, grubs up, I've caught something, come check it out. I think, I think I've heard that with like dogs and the squeaky toys. Mm. The squeaker is supposed to mimic the sound of an animal in distress. As, I think <laughs> as you're killing it, I think is what. Yeah. But like Dally, our first dog, she had like surgical precision she could unstitch (laughs) the back of the toy like one day we got home and i swear it was it was i would have thought a human had done it there was a hole this big in the back of this toy 
one piece of fluff on the floor beside it and then the squeaker on the other side like she had ex- <laughs> like if she had thumbs she had extracted it. that's amazing <laughs> Ooh, this yeah. is this thinking bit let's take that out yeah take it and like gozer and zul had done the same thing they're not really one for destroying toys but they've yeah. like removed they removed the squeaker like <laughs> we got it um Ooh. Hermione was, like I've said before, she's a very good hunter. And one time she came in the house and she had a mouse, which she intended to play with. And so she was dropping it and then patting it and I was trying to get off of her. But before I could get it, um, she just grabbed it and then bit down and then her canine punctured the mouse's skull. And the mouse just went, it just switched off. Oh, at least it was quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least there's that. We had a mouse in our house and uh, it was like, something had rolled under like a chest freezer we have in the basement. So I got on my hands and knees to look under the freezer for it. And I saw this dead mouse that was there. So I like fall out. And then I thought like, I'm a strong independent woman. I can take care of this fucking mouse situation. I don't need no man to take care of this mouse. I can fucking do it myself. So I thought like, I didn't want to move the freezer. So my plan was I was going to get like a piece of paper. Yeah. Hide it under the mouse, pull the mouse out. Good plan. I thought so too until I like it went thunk against the mouse's body and I just went bleh, bleh. <laughs> <laughs> no that was the end of that strong independent woman I was like I'm gonna independently ask my husband to take care of this shit because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then what's so weird is that one day like I opened up our garage door and there was a dead mouse on the floor and I was like oh and I grabbed something and like picked it up and like put it out and I was like how come I could do it there but I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't do it in the house, maybe because I was going to have to present it to myself. I yeah, like, <laughs> I think it's the situation, isn't it? But, like, you're going to have to bring it out on this weird paper platter. Yeah, maybe that was it. Yeah. Like, canopy. I had to bring <laughs> Yeah. I remember when I was uh, uh, staying at my stepdad's, and then there was, like, a, a bird had died in the back garden. It was, like, a blackbird. And I said to my da- uh, stepdad, and I was like, yeah, you might want to clean that up. And then, well, I asked him if, I, if he wanted me to do it. He said, no, I'll do it later. All right, fine. Being autistic, I took him literally. But my stepdad's one of those blokes. He just wants you to do it and then and not ask. <laughs> you know, and he should have like. just said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking annoying. But anyway, um, and I kept telling him through the day, you know, it's getting bigger. It's more bloated. I think you need to get rid of it. Anyway, eventually it exploded with maggots everywhere. <laughs> yeah. On that note. <laughs> Face of black. Yeah. <laughs> On that note.